Hey guys, what's going down? It's Courtney, and today I'm going to be doing a joint wrap-up for the months of January and February. I only read seven books, however, I don't think that's such a bad thing because I've been so busy lately. This semester has seriously been overkill. I mean, I have been so stressed out. I'm taking a chemistry course, English, which I do like, I really like English, psychology, which is very fascinating. However, I accidentally signed up for an accelerated course, so the workload is more rigorous. And I'm also taking Spanish. So it's a lot of work and there have been a lot of tears. <laughs> It's been really hard, so honestly, I'm proud of myself for getting through the seven books that I was able to get through. I mean, they're not big books, they're tiny books, but, you know, I am proud of myself. Joining me in this video, I have this very wonderful cup of Starbucks Smoked Butterscotch Latte, which is my favorite drink from Starbucks right now. It is so delicious. This video is not sponsored. I just like my Starbucks coffee, so... Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay. To my tiny, tiny pile of books. These are in no particular order. First I have Jacoby by William Ritter, which is set in 1892 and follows Abigail Rook, who has just arrived in New England. She is looking for work and so she becomes the assistant of Jacoby, who is a freelance investigator with the ability to see supernatural beings. There is a murder mystery situation going on here and Jacoby is absolutely certain that the culprit is inhuman. However, the authorities think he's a lunatic. I am a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. I love the movies with Robert Downey Jr. in it. And I like the show starring Benedict Cumberbatch. I haven't read all the books, I read some of the first one and didn't finish it, so I gotta do that sometime soon. But I really like Sherlock Holmes, so I was really happy to pick this up, and I just said really like a dozen times. But um, it's very whimsical, and it has a lot of supernatural and mythological elements to it, whereas the real story of Sherlock Holmes is more realistic. I didn't like this book as much as I was hoping I would. It was okay. Um, the characters weren't bad, but I didn't really care so much for our mock Sherlock Holmes. And the humor in this story just wasn't all that funny. There were a lot of bits that you could tell were supposed to be funny that were just like, mm, no. The mystery wasn't so bad, but I don't know, I just found myself trudging my way through this book, and it took me a lot longer to complete this book than I expected. I like the idea of the story, I just kind of feel like it could have been better executed. Despite all of the issues that I had with this book, I still ended up rating it like 3 out of 5 stars, um, which gives me an excuse to buy the second book, which has an absolutely gorgeous cover. I love these covers. The covers for these books are so nice. Book number two is Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. History and fiction merge seamlessly in Tracy Chevalier's luminous novel about artistic vision and sensual awakening. Through the eyes of 16-year-old Frit, the world of 1660s Holland comes dazzlingly alive in this richly imagined portrait of the young woman who inspired one of Vermeer's most celebrated paintings. This book was so good, and I really liked the writing. Frit's voice was just so lovely, and I thoroughly enjoyed this story. It has such a quiet and pleasant tone to it. I couldn't put it down, and I continued to think about this story days after I finished it. I love that art was incorporated into the story. It was so well described that I was able to vividly imagine what it looked like, and I love that it was so well done. I rated this book 5 out of 5 stars. It is definitely one of my new favorites, and I highly recommend it because it was so good. Next I have Lockdown Escape from Furnace by Alexander Gordon Smith, which is about a 14-year-old delinquent who is framed for murder and sent away to Furnace Penitentiary, which is literally an underground hellhole. Furnace Penitentiary is filled with murderous gangs, vicious guards, and evil murderous creatures that steal people away in the night. And so basically, escape is the only hope. It took me a long time to actually finish this book. Um, that doesn't mean that it wasn't interesting because it really was. I love the idea of the story. However, there were a lot of slow bits, and it took a lot for me to push through them. I did like Alex, our main character, even though he was an idiot, you know, if you steal bad things are going to happen to you, which, you know, he's learning. However, I do think that Furnace Penitentiary is just a little too harsh. I mean, killing kids, that's, that's just not right. Um, I like the plot, and the other characters were neat as well. This is a thriller, and honestly, there were moments in this book that actually had me on the edge of my seat, especially towards the end, which I think was like, had the best parts. I rated this book 3 out of 5 stars. 
Next I have Coraline by Neil Gaiman, which I am so glad that I finally read. I know you guys probably already know what this is about because it's a very popular book and it's been around for a while, but I'm just honestly so happy that I finally read it. Neil Gaiman's writing is very good and he's very talented. I love this story. Um, I love the movie and I liked seeing the differences between the two. There are a lot of differences. Like, there's no YB in the book, whereas in the movie there's a YB and then that whole thing with his grandmother and the dolls that didn't actually happen in the book. But I actually really liked the changes that were made in the movie. I really enjoyed them. And I, while I was reading this, I found myself kind of filling in the gaps um, where the movie added things to it. And I can honestly look at the book and movie as one and the same. That's how you know you have a really good book to movie adaptation, when you can look at them as one and the same. And I can do that with this. I rated it four out of five stars. It was just really good. Next I have Ignite Me by Tahara Mafi, which is the third book in the Shadow Me series. And honestly, it was so amazing, you guys. I just loved the story so much and I wasn't expecting to at all because the first book I rated like 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and then the second book was like 4 out of 5 stars but this was a solid 5 out of 5 stars. It was just that good. Tahada Mafi's writing is incredible and the character development was just so amazing to watch. Juliet has changed so much. She's transformed so much from the way that she was in book one to book three. She's just become this amazing character and Warner is amazing as well. These characters are just so well written and I love that. I'm super excited about book four. I'm gonna hold off on buying it for as long as I can because um, book five comes out in like 2019 and that's a long time to have to wait so I'm going to do my best and try to stay away from it. Also I do have to warn you guys there are some sexy scenes in here and you know while they aren't extremely graphic they're pretty close i personally don't prefer to read sex scenes in books so i thought i'd just put that out there for anybody who's like me next i have mockingjay by suzanne collins which is the third and final book in the hunger games trilogy i'm sure you guys already knew that um i'm like the last one to read these books <laughs> I thought it was really good. I know a lot of people didn't really like the way that it ended, but I thought it was well deserved. And you know, Katniss had been through so much. I thought that she and Peeta just, they deserved each other and they deserved to have this ending. So I was happy with that actually. There was a character death that, you know, I wish didn't happen, but um, <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. I rated it five out of five stars. This series is just, it's, such a wonderful series and honestly I could see myself rereading it because it is just that good. And last but not least I have All the Truth That's in Me by Julie Berry. This is a historical fiction that follows a teenager named Judith who went missing for two years and came back with her mouth mutilated. Like she's missing her tongue. No one knows what happened to her and Judith doesn't really know the whole truth herself. She's unable to speak and she's pretty much ostracized by her entire community including her family. But when long buried secrets begin to come to light, she must choose to either continue to live in silence or find her voice and tell the truth. I actually really enjoyed this book. And even though Judith doesn't really speak much, I liked her voice and, you know, inside her head. I liked being inside of Judith's head. I also didn't realize how much I liked the name Judith until I read this book. So I can thank Julie Berry for that. There were some mystery elements to this story and I really enjoyed them. The romance was really sweet. And I liked the characters, the setting. The story was just overall a really enjoyable read. I rated it four out of five stars. I think this was a great introduction to Julie Berry's work. Well, that was it. And I only have like a little bit of coffee left, so. Oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you guys next time. <laughs>